Harry March. He's taken over North Creek Station. I need to fix up my trap yard. I was wondering if you could help me. Where'd you get your black stock from? Oh, no. We're all equal here. We're all equal in the eyes of the Lord. After, reading, after I read the script, I sort of started going, OK, if you had the little book of how to make a Western, page one, you know, anamorphic... Opening shot. Opening shot. Rise. Train, yeah. legs, you know what I mean, music. <laughs> Let's start getting rid of all of the clichés of a Western. Let's start pulling all the, the ideas that you would have originally for a Western out of the story just to try and make it a little bit more... To make it feel a little bit more truthful, if that's a word for, you know, sort of the perspective of the film is not dictated by the director and the way the director pushes the film. The, 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 the film is dictated and it's directed by the story, not by me as a director or by us as cinematographers. We found that to be really important, to try and make it feel as truthful as possible. Where have you been? He tied me up. What? You mean he changed you up? What'd you do? Nothing. You see what happened? The camera was slightly below everyone's eye line, so that we empowered everyone in the film. We never played with, you know, looking... Well, actually, that and everyone wore hats. Like, the number one thing when you're shooting a Western is everyone's going to wear a hat and... to. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps covering their eyes and shadows and, yeah, you know, that, try <laughs> and trying to use that. And so then we started shooting everything lower cause, yeah. so we could see their face, you know. The cowboy hat is one of the most wonderful cinematic tools ever because not only um, can you use the light, like you can, you know, you like this and then you kind of go, you know, get a bit of the eyes. You, know, you can let actors, you teach actors to play with that. So, you know, in, your eyes are in shadows and then eyes are lit up, all that kind of stuff. But we could shoot, you know, during the day, especially in the desert in Central Australia, like the sun is so horrible at 12 o'clock when you know, the sun comes straight down. Ugliest lighting on people's faces. But you put a cowboy hat on people and then suddenly you knock all of that really hard light off. So it's sort of like one of the most wonderful cinematic tools. It's sort of like you're putting your own, you're putting your own colour over everyone. No. We tried to break the Alexa, didn't we? Well, I, try, I try and break every camera I use. Um, not, not physically pick it up and throw it, but I try and push them as far as I can go, the biggest latitudes, you know what I mean, and <clears throat> see where, where they fail. And it was interesting, because with the, with the Alexa, it just sort of sucked it all up. It was, it was annoying in a way. I mean, really, the Alexa was just, it will just work. That, it was as simple as that. Yeah. It, it wasn't a look or anything, it was just it will... It will work where we're going to take it. When we shot the film with two cameras, one camera on top of the other camera, we shot the, all the all of the film has been shot in UV ultraviolet as well as you know the normal um, arrow <coughs> roll. And then what we did was we paired those two images together. You take the UV filter out, so it, you get all the that whole spectrum of yeah, and then colour. and then they they wrote a program so that the anamorphic lenses would match the the Canon lens, so that we basically created, the whole film was, had, a, had a, like a, a rotoscope of, of the whole film, but in UV. And then what I could do then was I could choose the grain structure of different things. So the grain structure of, of, of a person is sort of, you know, 800 ISO grain structure in a way. And then I could put a different grain structure, a much harder grain structure into the rocks and then I could put a different grain structure into the sky. So we could start playing with the motions, but not just... Rather than the idea of a layer, a grain layer over the whole film. I wanted the, I wanted the, the, um, the desert to have a character, its own character. So we created this thing called ether, which is kind of like a weird grain that has a sort of a... Almost like a lensy kind of idea to the, the grain, so it's sort of oh, fracture like, a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like a heat wave. Like a heat wave. Like energy. But then I'd only put it into the trees and I'd only put it into the grass and not to the rocks, so that they were sort of like, they were trying to make the, the, the grass and the trees like almost like a sentient being in, in its own way, a life force. It's an emotion rather than a visual um, presence. Visually, it's very subtle, but emotionally, you can kind of feel it, and that was really interesting. I, I, we, 
it's something that I want to keep doing. And I think, you know, I, we're, we're Aboriginal, we're, you know, Indigenous to Central Australia. And the way we look at the landscape is that it's alive. Like you would if you walk, walked into, the, you know, the, the, the forest here in Poland, you know what I mean? The trees are alive. It's all alive and it's all sort of talking to you and it's all watching you and it's all thinking about who you are and you're looking at it going, who are you, you know, those kind of... Con and I like that idea that you can start playing with the landscape and start, start playing that it's actually an entity and it's a sentient kind of spiritual thing. Why did you run, Mr. Kelly? I shot a white fella. <laughs>